this weekend, the Big Apple is going to the dogs. <laughs> From the pups. This is Kenny. This is Scott. To the preps. This is honestly one of the biggest groupings of dogs all in one place. It's the American Kennel Club's Meet the Breeds. Good evening. I'm Stacey Delacat here at the American Kennel Club's Museum of the Dog. The AKC is getting ready for the largest gathering of dogs in the Northeast. It's called Meet the Breeds and it's happening this weekend at the Javits Center. And as one regular says, it is a dog lover's dream. <laughs> This is Canella. She's a seven-month-old Doberman. This is Penny. She's a Russell Terrier. Some of these dogs probably look familiar. Others are a little less common. This is Scott. He's uh, a common door. He'll be about uh, a year and a half in about 10 days. She's a Peruvian Inca Orchid. So it's a hairless sighthound from Peru. Whether exotic or a popular presence on the streets of New York City or elsewhere, they'll all be under the same roof at the Javits Center for the American Kennel Club's 11th annual Meet the Breeds. Meet the Breeds is what we like to call an educational extravaganza when it comes to pet ownership. This is honestly one of the biggest groupings of dogs all in one place and cats, of course, um, in the country. Jillian Maloney, digital marketing manager for AKC and mom to Shih Tzu Ernie, is overseeing the two-day showcase. The people who are here with these dogs are the professionals. They have been breeding or owning these breeds for most of their lives, and they know everything we need to know about these breeds. So they're truly the breed experts in a way. They're there we go. Liz Malloy is one of those experts. I've uh, been showing and training dogs for over 40 years. Malloy, who counts Twizzle among her many dogs, recently joined AKC as a lead trainer for its canine retreats. But before that, she was a regular at shows and Meet the Breeds. A dog lover's dream. It, it really is. Malloy and Twizzle were among the dogs and owners at a recent Meet the Breeds sneak peek event at Hudson Yards, spreading the word about what to expect at the big showcase. We get to talk about the history of the breed, why they were developed, why they're still important in the world today, and, and we get to see people loving on our dogs. He is a Brittany. He's 14 months old. Cassandra McComb will be manning the Puppy Visor booth this year. She got her dog Bennett last year after attending the convention. Get to see their personalities in person. You know, you can read a lot on the internet, but knowing what energetic means in person is a big deal. And yes, that goes for the cats too. There are some show cat breeds that people will love and if you are a dog and cat lover or maybe you're trying to find a dog to go along with your cat or a cat to go along with your dog, they can tell you what breeds work best for that. So while it's a useful experience for those looking for the perfect companion or new forever member of the family, it's also just about having fun. This event makes everyone so happy and it's just seeing everyone's faces, seeing these breeds, seeing dogs they've only seen on TV or on the computer by seeing pictures and just seeing them interact is truly the best part. We just introduced you to a few breeds, but what are the top five breeds here in New York City? We're counting them down. Number five, German Shepherd. Hi, I'm Karen Gadolita. I'm a German Shepherd lover, owner, and former breeder. This is Nunzio, Marcello, and we also have Baccio and Cesare. <laughs> To know a German Shepherd is just to love them. They are an incredible, amazing, beautiful breed. They are brave. They are so intelligent. They are super easy to train, loyal, loving. They're a great family dog. They're so versatile. From babysitting to bomb sniffing, they do it all. Number four, Bulldog. I have Grand Champion Miracles Robin Ophelia and Delacos Miracles Athena. I think Bulldogs are the breed to own. They're sweet, they're kind, they love everybody. All the aggressiveness and the tenaciousness that they were originally bred for has been bred out of them. They're strictly a companion dog. You can take the dog out for a short walk, bring it into the stores, or just sit in the park and watch people go by. Or they're just as happy sitting on the couch and watching TV and eating potato chips. Number three, Golden Retriever. I'm Susan Paleas, and this is Alistair. Alistair! Golden Retrievers are smart. They're easy to train. They have wonderful, sweet temperaments. They were developed to be 
hunting companions and so they are good with many people and with many other dogs. They are very good family dogs. Their pretty coats require regular baths, brushing. They are very willing to be a therapy dog. They can even be service dogs. They want to please you. Good job. Number two, Labrador Retriever. Oh my goodness. Hi, my name is Teresa Viesto, and I am a Labrador Retriever owner and breeder. What makes a Labrador Retriever so great is that they are the perfect family pet. You can do just about anything with them, from cuddling on the couch to dock diving and hiking. They are super friendly, easy to train, very food motivated, and you can even use toys as a reward. They only shed once a season, and they are the perfect size dog for a house or an apartment. And the number one most popular breed in New York City is French Bulldog. Hi, my name is Ashton Abbott and this is my French Bulldog, Nelson. If you're interested in getting a French Bulldog, they are incredibly happy, curious, friendly, outgoing people pleasers. They have great big personalities and a city-sized body. This fellow weighs 25 pounds. They don't need a lot of exercise. A couple of walks a day will do it. If you're planning on getting a French Bulldog, I would recommend starting with looking at a list of local registered AKC breeders. Frenchies are wonderful dogs, but they can have a couple of health issues. Some of that stems from their lovely flat faces. They can have breathing issues and they can be very sensitive to the heat and to the cold. Um, a good breeder will help you avoid those problems. Nelson goes to work with me and I call him my CFO, Chief Frenchie Officer, because he spends all day glued to my leg or sitting on my lap. One breed that's getting a lot of love and attention this year is the Pekingese, and that's because of a little guy named Wasabi. Here's Briella Tomasetti. Best in show tonight is the Pekingese. <laughs> wow. Wasabi. Wasabi, a precious year and a half old Pekingese, stunned crowds at the 2019 American Kennel Club National Championship in Orlando and took home top prize, that is $50,000 cash and bragging rights, of course. I put them on the table and I have a stand-up blow dryer and I just have the cool air going and just brush, you know, through like that. While the big ball of fluff is notorious for its thick mane and luscious locks, owner and handler David Fitzpatrick tells us Wasabi's personality is what really packed the biggest punch, earning him the most coveted canine title around. I was just hoping he would enjoy being in the big ring and being, you know, there's cameras, there's people. It's a situation that you can't duplicate at home for exposure or training purposes. This was Wasabi's first competition. First up, he had to defeat 30 other Pekingese just to advance to the toy group. Then, he beat out 21 other breeds in the toy group to compete for best in show. All in all, he beat out 5,200 other dogs. I am not a breed expert, but his head is gorgeous. And not being able to feel him, we don't know, but underneath all of that hair, he's got to be pretty perfect. Fitzpatrick says the win was completely unexpected for the young pup, who is both on ranked and on heralded. But talent runs in the family. Well, his grandfather uh, was uh, Malachi that won Best in Show at Westminster Kennel Club in 2012. That was the last year that they had the entire judging done at Madison Square Garden. And, um, you know, he was a history-making dog. You know, he won 115 Best in Shows. Americans have a long history when it comes to dog shows. Somewhere in the prehistoric world, man domesticated the ancestor wolf stock and evolved the friendly spirit and faithful heart of the dog. The dog show started out as an English tradition, dating back to the late 1850s. About 10 years later, after the end of the Civil War, the United States jumped on the bandwagon. Famous dog owners like Zsa Zsa Gabor, Lena Horne, even President Gerald Ford have taken part in dog shows. And the best dog in the show is proclaimed to be the champion Cocker Spaniel. Historian Bud Bacone says while dog shows are essentially an exhibition of breeding stock, they're also a Gather lot like theater, both possessing a ring. cast of characters, some drama, and a bit of storytelling. A dog show has uh, entertainment value. It has uh, a little show business uh, involved in it. Why? Because the dogs move. 
And once the dogs move, the dogs need a handler. And the magic about it all, proven by Little Wasabi, is that it doesn't take much to qualify, even if you're a newbie. If you have a good dog, you get in the ring and you go head to head, male, female, rich, poor, professional, um, amateur, it doesn't matter. Coming up, a grand tour of the Museum of the Dog. Most of these uh, paintings have stories. And there's so much more than what's hanging on the walls. Sit. Oh, there good she goes. Good girl, she gets a treat. Mm -hmm. Then. We have some of the very earliest books written solely on dogs. Inside a library like you've never seen. Anything about dogs you can imagine, it's here. Plus, do dogs really like to get cuddled? Do they really need winter coats? We'll break down some of the biggest myths about our best friends. Welcome back from the Museum of the Dog. Last year, the AKC brought this museum back to New York City from St. Louis and opened it here at this Midtown location. Take a look at some of what's inside. Now coming up on its one year anniversary in its new Midtown Manhattan home, the American Kennel Club's Museum of the Dog is giving new perspective to man's best friend. Most of these uh, paintings have stories. This is a, a painting, a modern painting of uh, a, a scene from the Westminster uh, Kennel Club Dog Show. Museum CEO and Executive Director Alan Fausel gave us an insider tour, showing us some of the museum's most unique pieces. This is our latest acquisition. It's um, uh, Stubby Salutes. The sculpture by Susan Bahar is among the works celebrating war dogs. Young man, when he was deployed, took him on the boat to um, World War I. And while he was on the boat, you weren't supposed to have a dog. But he had taught Stubby how to salute. And so when he, the CO came in, the commanding officer said, um, he had to salute, he said, yeah, you can keep him. But he was actually a real dog, a real war dog. He, um, he you know, saved some lives, he, um, he had a purple heart, he was in 17 different battles. There are the more whimsical pieces like the Bravos. Sort of a crowd favorite. And we had these fox hairs, it's very geometric and then colorful, much like Talvera pottery in Mexico. And it's just so different from all these Victorian portraits. People just love it. It's just eye-catching and, and fun. The current temporary exhibition is called Photos, Please Do Not Bend, a collection of ordinary snapshots of dogs amassed over decades. We want to show the human canine bond, and we really do, as the AKC promotes, um, responsible uh, pet ownership. And speaking of that human canine bond, there are plenty of opportunities for interaction, <coughs> starting with a virtual dog training station. Sit. Oh, there Good she goes. girl, she gets a treat. <laughs> Visitors can also scroll through a Meet the Breeds table for detailed information on their favorite kinds of dogs, and the Find Your Breed Match selfie booth has proven to be a big hit with all who visit. Just upstairs from the museum, the AKC has an amazing collection of rare books about dogs. We got an exclusive look inside. A deep dive on the bulldog, the history of the British dog, and a page turner like the Kennel Murder Case, all within the climate controlled glass walls of the American Kennel Club's library. These books uh, range from things on hunting and herding to veterinary science books, all the way to really niche topics like dog astrology. So anything about dogs you can imagine, it's here. Assistant librarian Joshua Cody gave us a tour of the rare collection. Um, we have interesting books in here, such as everyone's favorite collie, Lassie. The 1940 edition of the collie classic could be considered one of the more modern books in the collection, which dates back to the 1500s. We have some of the very earliest books written solely on dogs. This whole book was made and published in um, 1881. This has beautiful chromolithic prints. Um, as you can see here, this amazing um, depiction of a pug and Italian greyhound. In an era of instant access to information at our fingertips, the contents of many of these books can't be found online. A lot of the world's knowledge is still contained within books and a lot of it is actually not really online. So a lot of that's kind of hidden away here waiting to be discovered. And there's something unique about turning century old pages. There's a number of different reasons why books are still um, such a great resource compared to the internet. Part of it is the materiality of them actually having that physical book. A lot of our older books from the 16th century, 17th century, the handmade paper alone is a completely different experience. The library is sought out by bibliophiles and dog lovers alike and is open to any doggedly determined researcher who can show they're working on a relevant project. But you'll have to study the material here under supervision from the staff. Like the subject matter they cover, most of these books are valuable 
beautiful and beloved. Coming up, does your dog have separation anxiety? Maybe they just bark a little bit when the owner leaves. Some are much more severe where they might try to injure themselves. The new high-tech treatment that promises to calm your canine. Tonight, as we celebrate all things dogs, we also want to take a look at some new technology in the dog world. Richard Giacovas introduces us to a new device that could help millions of dogs who suffer from separation anxiety. Every pet owner has gone through it. Coming home from work only to find your century-old couch just became the newest chew toy. Some are mild. Maybe they just bark a little bit when the owner leaves. Some are much more severe where they might try to injure themselves. But rather than sacrifice for the sake of your dog's sanity, a new drug-free alternative developed by a veterinarian in North Carolina could soon become the newest relaxation technique. Girl. So that just fits right around the neck. We started to look into the research that was being done in humans and the products available that offer that technology for humans to treat mood disorders. It's called targeted PEMF, or targeted pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, which according to Harvard University has been successful in helping people with anxiety and depression. So researchers at Assisi Animal Health decided to try the therapy on dogs. In fact, 13 million dogs in the U.S. suffer from separation anxiety when they're away from their owners. But Dr. Judy Corman says the collar which sits on top of her dog Rue's head like a halo is a non-invasive way for these four-legged pups to be okay with staying home for extended periods of time without their master. It tells how powerful this technology can be and how easy it is to for the owners to use. It also tells how safe it is. The pilot program for Calmer Canine was held last year with 10 different breeds of dogs, from pointers to Maltese mixes, and all of those breeds after just one week showed a decrease in separation anxiety, just like Rue. It's a life changer for some people. And although Calmer Canine is fairly new on the market, hundreds of dog owners across the U.S. have purchased the product from the American Kennel Club, hoping they can take that next trip around the world with peace of mind. Sit pretty, up, up, pretty. Oh, that was a big one. Coming up, can you teach an old dog new tricks? And do dogs really like to get dirty? We reveal the truth about some popular dog myths. break down some popular myths about dogs. We get the answers from the AKC's chief medical officer, Dr. Jerry Klein. Fact or fiction? Dogs like to get dirty. That's a fact, actually. Dogs don't mind getting dirty, but there's some dogs in certain breeds that are as fastidious as cats, breeds like a Basenji. And while many dogs don't like getting wet, they do love the snow. Fact or fiction? Dogs should wear winter coats. That's kind of a myth. But it depends on the dog's breed, age, health, and the actual weather. In firm dogs, a very weak dog or very young dogs, may need a sweater for protection in those extreme cold weathers. But dogs that have double coats usually have that as a protective layer. So that's one reason you do not want to clip a dog with what we call a double coat. Fact or fiction, dogs like to be cuddled. That's a fact. Most dogs love to be cuddled. It gives them warmth and a certain bonding with humans. In fact, they give off something called oxytocin, that feel-good hormone. But dogs do not like to be bear-hugged. It gives them anxiety. Fact or fiction, one dog year equals seven human years. That's actually false. According to the AVMA, the first year of a medium dog's life is equal to about 15 human years. Their second year is equal to nine human years. After that, every year is equal to about five years. It's different with giant breeds. Fact or fiction, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's false, you can teach an old dog new tricks, but it takes time and you have to have patience. Studies have shown that it can take up to four weeks to teach an older dog a new trick. That's it for us this evening from the American Kennel Club's Museum of the Dog. Remember to check out Meet the Breeds this weekend at the Javits Center. For more information, you can visit akc.org or head to our website, fox5ny.com. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great night.